long rains strike Kenya between March and June. But with few storms, the wet season has become more and more dry. With water running low, tensions are high. While a full-blown war is rare among the animal kingdom, a scarcity of resources changes the equation. And now, each of these animals will have to use every last ounce of their strength and battle for survival. The struggle draws the animals to the diminishing Mara River. Normally one of the greatest water sources in Kenya. The thirst for water unleashes something greater. A thirst for blood. situation. up to her title, Queen of the African Savannah. Just ask Helen of Troy. The king of the jungle actually lives elsewhere on the flat African savanna. And like any king, he's not afraid to flaunt it. Often taking it easy and sleeping for up to 20 hours a day. But one thing will wake this beast up, and that's another lion honing in on his lioness. Lions live in prides of one to three male superiors, a dozen lionesses, and their young. But only one of the males gets mating rights. And all the females are his queens. They share the breeding responsibilities they do most of the hunting. And above all, they are selfless, taking down all the prey for their sleepy sultan. So it's no surprise he wants these females all to himself. And it's no wonder this intruder, who is flying solo, wants them too. Sensing an attack, the king prepares to protect his throne. With no clear winner, the fight continues. The intruder makes his move. leaves the king defeated. In the ultimate act as brutal conqueror, the new king will kill off all the existing cows. 
This will maximize his reproductive success and ensure his offspring is the next generation of royalty. Hyenas already have a pretty bad rap. Between the snarling, the scavenging, and the blood curdling laugh, these animals don't need another characteristic to make them scary. But we found one deadly sibling rivalry. These 190 pound predators live in a strict hierarchy. Like the military, every hyena has a rank. The higher your rank, the more you get to eat. Females take the top spots, and like a royal family, pass their status on to their children. So whatever your mother's rank is, is your rank. But there's one problem. A mother hyena can't always provide for all her young. And the least aggressive cub will least likely survive. Which means the struggle between siblings for dominance starts almost immediately after birth. Weighing less than three pounds, the hyena pups are born with open eyes and sharp teeth, which they promptly turn on each other. Eventually, two sister pups figure out the best way to win is to eliminate the third. They attack. They don't kill her. Instead, they limit her access to their mother's milk, eventually starving her to death. As the surviving sisters grow, they will continue to use their rank to steal food and bully others, serving as a reminder of who really is at the top. Some armies operate as a swift tactical unit honing the art of surprise, not the wildebeest. Like a mass of invading medieval warriors, the wildebeest of East Africa march 1,800 miles across the vast Serengeti plains. Their mission? To reach the Maasai Mara, where greener pastures of vegetation and food await them. For the most part, it's a peaceful march. Wildebeest are, after all, herbivores. But when it comes to reaching their final destination, a stampeding pack of more than one million has no time to worry about who or what ends up beneath their hooves. As this legion continues on its epic journey, crossing plains and rivers, its number swells. Inevitably, the deafening sound of millions of pounding hooves attracts unwanted attention. The weariest, the old, or the very young are targeted. But nothing and no one will get in their way. Once again, that in an army, 
It's all about strength in numbers. Throughout time, land has proven to be the catalyst of some of the greatest battles in history. In the animal kingdom, that couldn't be more true. Whether it's a treetop, a nest, or a desert, these animals are looking to expand and protect their territory, or die trying. In the northern forests lives the goshawk. This is not a bird to mess with. With a wingspan of four feet, fierce red eyes, and massive talons, he's a natural born predator. He'll eat birds and rodents, and he'll take out prey half his body weight. And he's also a territorial badass. Pairs of goshawks rule kingdoms over a half a mile wide, anchored by their most important possession, their wooden throne, which they aggressively protect. This goshawk seems to have spotted something. The hare realizes he's under attack and takes off. Armed with sharp binocular vision, the goshawk is able to quickly adapt to his obstacles, seemingly shape-shifting through the forest. But with a literal bird's eye view, he doesn't let the hare out of his sight. When it comes to protecting his throne, nothing gets past this goshawk. In any bid for power, territory is an important part of securing supremacy. In equatorial Africa, Eastern chimpanzees know that all too well. They are willing to wage epic battles over a prime piece of land, as vicious as any human turf war. Chimpanzees spend much of their time mating, cleaning, and playing together. It's all rather tame, until it's time to hunt. <laughs> they are primarily vegetarians, munching on forest fruits and plants. Which means a hunting trip isn't quite what you would expect. Every two weeks, the eastern chimps gather into groups of 20 or more males and set out. But they aren't looking for prey. They're looking for territory with more food. They move through their own terrain, eventually coming across another chimp tribe's turf. An eerie silence falls over the forest. Munching on fruit up above is a group of chimps completely unaware of the impending battle below. It's the perfect time to strike. The fighting is chaotic, and the invaders focus in on other males. An unlucky infant is caught and killed. Defeated, the invaded chimp tribe runs away. For our chimps, it's victory for now. But a new battle for land is always on the horizon.
The Meerkat Kingdom stretches thousands of miles from coast to coast in southern Africa and is divided into individual square miles of sand scrub ruled by protective meerkat mobs. It might not seem like much, but for them, it's their entire world. Living in mobs of up to 50, meerkats create entire villages underground, extensive tunnels and room systems that protect them from predators in the hot African sun. Digging the homes at Group Affair, and when completed, there can be over 70 entrances. Because the territories of different mobs often overlap, disputes can break out at any moment. So for protection, the meerkats send out sentries, like this one, watching for invaders. Dark patches around his eyes help to reduce the glaring desert sun, and his long horizontal pupils give him a wide range of vision. In the distance, he spots another mob moving close. Many times an opposing clan will approach and turn away, but not today. To intimidate the invaders, the meerkats stand as tall as possible on all four legs, hair and tail erect. The two mobs eye each other warily, perform a war dance, and then... attack. Wrestling one another to the ground and using their vicious canine teeth, the battles are brief, but brutal. Today, this meerkat mob is safe, but the guard stays ever vigilant. Who knows what tomorrow will bring? Alone, these ants don't look like much. Small, pesky, perhaps an easy target. But when you put hundreds of thousands of them together, they are a force to be reckoned with. These are African driver ants. Traveling in groups up to 22 million strong, they invade and overwhelm territory. And with no allegiance to any particular land, they march from place to place, pillaging until resources are diminished. For anything that remains in its path, it's certain death. They are blind, so they can't see what's ahead of them. Instead, these ants use antennae to detect the movement of prey. Armed with a tough exoskeleton and machete-like jaws, they infest areas and swarm victims, butchering insects piece by piece. Up to 100,000 in a single day but always marching on to conquer more. Even this sea creature and his home aren't safe from this land-dwelling mass. Storming the crab and his domain, they eat him from the inside out. For this territorial army of millions, Nothing is ever enough. Potent and prideful, the animal kingdom is ruled by many power-hungry monarchs. But to survive and stay on their throne, these predators must kill or else be killed themselves. Large and in charge. That's the trademark of this king. Our solitary emperor holds the crown for the world's largest land carnivore. 
His kingdom is the vast Arctic North, a remote and harsh region where every day is an epic struggle for existence. To survive, the polar bear must be skilled in both smarts and strategy. He is equipped with perhaps nature's most effective fur coat. With an inner layer that retains heat and an outer layer that repels water and ice. It also allows this top predator to travel thousands of miles, all while reflecting light and blending into its surroundings. But our king has his issues. His world is made of ice, so it is constantly shifting or melting. come into play. They are broad so he can keep his balance, covered in fur and equipped with claws to grip the ice. And when the ice ends, the paws are partially webbed so they can double his oars while he swims, over 60 miles at a time. But to do so, he must consume over four pounds of fat daily. A blubbery seal can provide a polar bear with enough energy for eight days. Thinking he's safe, this seal pops his head up for some air. Little does he know, a polar bear is taking inventory. Result, a dead seal and a bloody but sated king. With his grisly howl and his formidable fangs, this next animal may be the most feared monarch in the natural world. Powerful, hungry, and lethal. This is the gray wolf. These beautiful, brutal bullies live in packs of six to 10 that are ruled by a king and a queen. They establish territory and determine the pack's movement, including who can eat and what to hunt. The alpha dogs lead a violent but efficient operation, moving up to 12 miles of land per day. And using their keen sense of smell, they sniff out other animals over a mile away. Cooperation among the ranks allow the wolves to take on much larger prey, like these stampeding 800-pound elk. The queen takes command and shows no fear, leading the chase against the herd.
eating up to 20 pounds each in one sitting, the pack fills up before it's time to set out on their next hunt. Following their king and queen to victory. Tiptoeing across the ocean bottom is a heavily armored knight. A loner, he tends to keep to himself, scavenging ocean waters. But on occasion, he joins thousands of other spider crabs off the coast of Australia to mate and to molt. But nearby, a king is lurking. Behold, the smooth stingray. Outfitted with a frightening serrated spine, or barb, he can produce venom and kill a human with just one slice. Using his sand-colored coat to camouflage, he glides along the sea floor to avoid its few predators. But hiding isn't what the stingray is about. This is an elite hunter, armed with electrical sensors around his mouth to find prey. Sensing the crabs beneath him, he hovers over them. They attempt to make an escape but not all of them will survive. This spider crab army is no match for a smooth stingray. In the battle to win a female's heart, it's not always about who's the strongest, but about who really sticks their neck out. The kingdom of the giraffe appears to be a quiet one, Standing up to 19 feet, they are the tallest mammals on Earth. And without making much of a sound, they roam the African savanna munching on trees. Giraffes seem calm, secure, and able to avoid much of the animal warfare below them. But in the animal world, looks can be deceiving. Roaming the African savanna, these tall, spotted, and handsome bulls strut their step, lick their lips, and search near and far for females. Inevitably, two males are going to set eyes on the same conquest. But therein lies the problem. They can't both have her. Unlike other animals, giraffes won't charge one another or attack with teeth bared. Instead, they fight with their 600-pound necks and heads. Without warning, one of the giraffes lands a surprise neck jab. His rival shows no mercy, slamming him repeatedly with jabs that can be heard over a half mile away. The fight is brief, but certain. And our victor giraffe takes what he's rightfully won. scene of grunting, grabbing, and bashing blubber is a special event in the sea lion calendar. Welcome to a royal wedding, sea lion style. A sea lion spends a lot of time in the water, swimming up to 20
25 miles per hour to track down various fish, squid, and octopus. But once a year, these blubbery beasts come ashore to mate. Using roaring, hissing, and biting, the males mark their territory on remote islands called rookeries. Once they have their spot, it's time for the brides to arrive. The bulls often become aggressive, mating with as many females as they can. Crushing and bloodying rivals, a sea lion will fight for his rookery and his many ladies. When this one tries to hone in on another's harem, it's a battle of strength and blubber. his foe out to sea. To fight a war, you need an army. Behold the military might of the animal kingdom. Deep in the African grasslands, each dressed in their own unique fur coat of arms. This fierce command of canines embarks across the savanna. These are African wild dogs. And while they may appear fuzzy, furry, and friendly, they are anything but. They are predators whose bite far exceeds their bark. Their strength lies in the fact that they stick together, moving for the good of all. This elite canine unit follows one basic creed, leave no dog behind. They travel in packs of up to 40. And using high-pitched chirps and body posture to communicate, the dogs maintain a tight formation while hunting and marching. In the morning or evening hours, the dogs set up a base camp. Today, a lead dog and his pack set off to find their next meal. They come across a group of lechwe. At 200 pounds of fur and horns, a lechwe towers over the 60 pound dog. But the mutts stand their ground. As the chase comes to a head, the dogs make their final move. Then, dig in. When the group is satisfied, they return to their base to feed the young, the wounded, and the sick, regurgitating food from the hunt. Who said chivalry was dead? Often the biggest threat to a kingdom doesn't come from outside invaders, but from within. Backstabbing, betrayal, sibling rivalry. These killers keep it in the family. In the quest to become king, nowhere does bloody infighting start as early as it does in the realm of the sand tiger shark. This shark mother will do anything to secure her favored child's future. Her plan is hatched at courtship. 
she mates with as many males as she can, eventually producing about a dozen embryos. And that's where things start to go downhill. With two uteri, a queen shark can only bear two children at a time. So in utero, it's a war for dominance. Each unborn shark baby has one goal, its sole survival. They will turn on each other and methodically start to cannibalize their siblings and gain strength. When all are devoured, the sibling slayer moves on to its mother's unfertilized eggs and eats those, a phenomenon called oophagy. For the baby shark, it's kill or be killed. And once they are born, they are immediately abandoned. Luckily for them, they've already gone through survival training and are clearly able to fend for themselves. In the deepest forests lives a regal and dignified matriarch, the Golden Eagle. Moving at speeds of up to 150 miles per hour, she is a voracious predator. And using her sharp talons, she takes out rabbits, prairie dogs, even deer. But while this queen is off killing in the wilderness, a more vicious battle takes place back at the castle. Because in the nest, when mom is away, the kids are prey. The golden eagle often only lays two eggs at a time. And as it turns out, this nest just isn't big enough for two. Many times, one egg hatches several days before the other, and thus receives all the attention of Mommy Dearest. Unable to fly for up to 13 weeks, the siblings could take this time to get to know one another. But that's just not how the Golden Eagle rolls. And when a younger sibling is born, the firstborn sees a threat, someone who takes up too much food and space, someone who has to go. The older chick sets upon the other, backing the younger eaglet to the edge of the nest. With no room or skill to fly, the only place for this young eaglet to go is down. Now an only child, the firstborn grows up to be the sole heir, inheriting the throne. And becoming the predator mother always wanted. On their own, these stories of savage sibling rivalries, terrifying territorial clashes, and awesome armies are brutal and bloody enough. But sometimes all of the worlds come together at once. These are the Game of Thrones epic battles. In the stormy ocean waters, scuffles between two adversaries for territories, resources, and power are common. But once a year, a grander underwater battle royale takes place. Off the shores of South Africa, between the months of May and July, millions of sardines migrate from the shores of Cape Town to Durban. In shoals that stretch up to nine miles long, two miles wide, and nearly 131 feet deep. This scene, known as the Sardine Run, is a little understood phenomenon and absolutely hypnotic. Using a pressure sense that runs along their bodies, the sardines stick together in hopes of minimizing their chances of becoming lunch. But it's no use. The 
ultimate battle of Blackwater has begun. Superpods of common dolphin arrive and corral the sardines into giant balls. Sharks breach the sardines from the sides. A troop of seals sneak attacks. And with binocular vision, eyes positioned forward, a command of Cape Gannet, yes, birds, spot the sardine run just below the surface. As a result, the Cape Gannets call an airstrike, rocketing into the water at 60 miles per hour. It is a brutal and endless feeding frenzy. the dolphins, the sharks, the seals, nor the gannets that will make the biggest splash in this sardine run. Enter from 1,000 feet below, a brutal monarch, the 90,000 pound bride's whale. While the other contenders pick one or two fish off at a time, this languid king merely has to open his mouth just once or twice for a full-on sardine feast. From deadly sibling rivalries to all powerful kings, in the animal free-for-all that is the Game of Thrones, only one thing is clear, win or die.